Hi guys and welcome back to Bampton Insight. So in our recent video on how to choose a racket and giveaway, almost half of you wanted to know how to perfect your backhand. And rightly so, as it's one of the hardest areas of badminton. So in this video, we're going to teach you how to perfect a backhand drop, a backhand clear and a backhand smash. And even if you can already play these, we're going to give you tips on how you can improve your technique, your shot accuracy and your power to give you the perfect backhand. We're going to cover the footwork, the grip and the hitting technique of the backhand and explain how the backhand smash, drop and clear all need slightly different techniques to play them perfectly. Now there is going to be a lot of information in this video and we don't expect you to be able to implement everything straight away. You might need to learn some of the tips, implement them, perfect them and then continue adding until you've got the perfect backhand. So without further ado, let's get to it. Firstly, it's really important to look at our footwork and positioning on the court. The best players do this really well, so it's no surprise they also have great backhands. The footwork will be the same for the three shots. So as soon as your opponents hit the shuttle, you want to split step in the direction you want to travel. You want to then chasse with your non-racket leg leading and then pivot so that you're facing backwards. Boom. And this chasse will depend how tall you are or how far you need to travel. You want to split step in the direction you want to travel. You want to then chasse with your non-racket leg leading and then pivot so that you're facing backwards. Oof. For example, as you can see here, Victor, who is very tall, is in control and therefore he only takes one very small chasse. In comparison, Tai Su Ying is a smaller player, therefore she needs a much bigger chasse step, especially when she's under pressure like she is here. So after you've done your pivot and you're facing backwards, you want to lunge with your racket leg hitting the floor at the same time as you hit the shuttle. After this, you then want to push off your racket leg so that you're facing forwards again. These are two very important points which we'll talk about a little later. So moving on to grips, you'll have different thumb positions on your racket depending on where you're taking the shuttle. For example, if you're taking it out to the side of you or in front of you, like in a drive or a lift, you'd use a standard backhand grip with your thumb on top. And if the shuttle is behind you, like it should be when you're taking a rear court backhand shot, then we'd use what's called the V grip, the bevel grip or the universal grip. We call it the bevel grip because where the flat part is on the grip, and then there's a little ridge here, or the bevel, that's where you place your thumb. And if the shuttle is really far behind you, then you should move your grip round to a panhandle grip. And these different types of grips will help you play more accurate and powerful shots, depending what position you're in. A final point is that your grip has to be relaxed, only squeezing it at the point of contact. But more on this in the next section. So there are four key points to the preparation of these three backhand shots. Firstly, despite what you might have been taught, you shouldn't start with your elbow high like this. As you can see from these clips, the professionals are all starting with their elbow around the bottom of their ribs. This is because starting with your elbow high means you can only generate power from your shoulder, whereas starting with your elbow low and bringing it high means that you can use your body and also your legs to rotate and give you power. Secondly, you should have a relaxed arm and grip during the preparation, as this will help you generate power. It's kind of like the more tense you are, generally the less power you're going to generate. Whereas if you're nice and relaxed, you can generate more power. One common mistake when playing a backhand is your body positioning. You don't want to be too tucked in and hitting the shuttle too closely to you as you don't have the room to swing. You also don't want to be too far away with your arms straight, meaning that you lose control. You want to be in a position where your arm is slightly bent upon the point of contact. It's kind of like throwing a punch in boxing. You don't want to punch with your arm tucked in as you won't be able to generate enough power. However, you also don't want to punch when your arm is straight. You want to have a slight bend upon the point of contact. Finally, the preparation of your backhand drop, clear and smash should all be the same. This is so your opponent doesn't know what you're playing until the very last second. Many people make their shot choice obvious, reducing the effectiveness of their shot. You should play a backhand drop when you want to neutralise the rally and not give the attack away. 
For example, like you can see here, the opponent isn't pressurising the front court and therefore it's a good option to play the drop. Now for every backhand shot, your racket leg should contact the floor at the same time as you hit the shuttle. And this is so that you can adjust right until the last minute as to where the shuttle's going and also use this leg to help you generate power in the shot. So in your swing, you need to trap the shuttle from where it's coming from and then cock your wrist a little bit. If you keep your wrist flat, then your strings are going to be pointing outwards and you're going to be hitting the shuttle like that to make it mean that there's a greater chance that it will go out. So track the shuttle, cut your wrist a little bit and then you, as you hit the shuttle, your racket shaft wants to be vertical like this, not like this or like this. And your strings facing forward to where you're hitting the shot. If you go for a cross court shot, then at the last minute you'll turn your strings slightly towards the cross. For the drop shot, you should try and keep the shuttle on your strings longer than the smash and clear. You also don't have to hit the shuttle at its highest point. You can let it drop a little so it's in a comfortable hitting zone. These key points will help you remain in control of your body and have a fluid swing, improving the accuracy of your shot. You can practice all of these shots by pushing the shuttle to a feeder so that you're out of position and then getting them to lift flat into your backhand corner like you can see now. As you can see, I did some cross shots as well as straight shots, and to do this, I altered the face of the racket at the last minute in the direction I wanted the shuttle to travel. So despite playing a slower shot, you still want to recover quickly, and you might want to move more towards the net as you anticipate this is where the next shot will be. Now the backhand clear is the shot that everyone in the world wants to be good at. We should use this shot when we're in deep trouble, and we want to reset the rally and buy ourselves some time. It can also be used when we feel our opponent is really pushing up to the front of the court and we want to push them back. There are two main technical differences between a backhand drop and the backhand clear, and these both relate to the power. Firstly, you need to really squeeze the grip to generate the power, and secondly, you need to use your body to generate the power, like shown in these clips. So similar to the drop, you need to have a flat racket face as you strike the shuttle. If you slice it, then you're going to lose accuracy and also lose power. And as you can see from the clip of Victor, when he hit the cross court, he obviously altered the strings to face that way. However, he still followed through in the direction of the cross court shot. So. Again, make sure that your racket leg is landing just as you are hitting the shot to help with the power and stability of your body. That you're making contact with the shuttle at the optimal point and that your arm is relaxed and slightly bent before contact. As we mentioned, you might use a clear to get yourself out of trouble. So when recovering out of the shot, you should recover more defensively than you would out of a drop or a smash. The backhand smash can be used if you're taking the shuttle slightly earlier than the drop or the clear. It can be used to put the pressure back onto your opponents and maybe even catch them by surprise. For the backhand smash, you need to have accelerated movement and body rotation needs to be quicker. Taking the shuttle a little earlier, like Jen said, you also need to develop that forearm rotation to get that wicking effect. For the backhand smash, you might not need to recover as you know it's going to be a winning shot. Only joking. But you do need to recover with a higher stance, ready to pounce on that weaker return. There are different techniques for taking a really late backhand, but we're sure this video is long enough by now, so we won't be covering this in today's video. But if you do want to learn this technique, let us know in the comment section below. Also, we have some very exciting news. Last week we launched our online badminton assessment. This is where you guys send us a video of yourself playing and we'll thoroughly assess your badminton. Having written and visual feedback and routines and resources will massively help you improve your game in areas such as tactics, technique, movement and footwork and more. Head to our website using the link here 
or we'll include the link in the description below for you to directly go there. And next week we'll be doing a video on Tai Su Ying's famous backhand reverse drop. So make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on that. And thank you to anyone that's still with us. If you've liked this video, please give it a like, smash that subscribe button, and we'll see you on another video. Maybe one of the ones we're about to show now. Thank you.